Funding the government isn't a great achievement. <laughs> it's a bare minimum of what we need to get done. But in these times, a bipartisan cooperation is worth recognition. President Biden, on the reality of the bill he signed and of this moment in American politics, a short-term fix to fund the government passed on Capitol Hill last night where several Republican senators were willing to risk time in the looming government shutdown just to fight President Biden and his vaccine policies, the moment that Omicron is emerging. It's an attempt that ended in a failed vote anyway. Washington Post calls the symbolic gridlock the start of a, quote, grim new era of governing. Quote, after a 10-month flurry of legislating, it heralded a potentially excruciating new era of governing for Biden and other Democratic leaders who must deal not only with an emboldened GOP leadership that sees House and Senate majorities well within their grasp, but a cadre of conservatives eager to hijack the basic processes of government, if only to make a point. Case in point, Axios is reporting that Senate Minority Leader Mitch McConnell has said he won't release a legislative agenda before the midterms next year. We're back with Donnie and Steve. You, McConnell's saying he won't release an agenda, Steve, reminding me of the Republican Party not releasing a platform. It was just Trump. Now Mitch McConnell's agenda is just Trump. Well, it's just to stop anything that Biden's for. It's utterly nihilistic. It's, uh, it's a strategy of vandalism, causes as much chaos, as much disruption, as much confusion as you can in the electorate for the purposes of taking power. And by the way, if you don't get enough votes after rigging the system, making it as hard as possible for minorities to vote, making it as difficult as possible for the middle of the electorate to have a voice because of gerrymander, gerrymandering and, and redistricting, after all of that, uh, you'll be prepared to say that, no, we won the election, we know that we lost, in the end, to, to further subvert American democracy to take power. And just at the at the end of the day, the lust for power supersedes everything. That's what this is about. And when you look ahead to the probability of Republicans on the trajectory that they're on uh, to have a majority in the House and, and maybe in the Senate, along with that comes subpoena power. So when you consider the obstruction now, you've not seen anything yet. Um, looking ahead to a Biden second two years of the first term with a, a Republican majority in either the House where, you know, you may well have a Speaker Marjorie Taylor Greene or a majority leader um, or a Chairman Lauren Boebert of an investigatory committee. So uh, we haven't seen anything yet when it comes to the vandalism and nihilism of the Republican Party, the pro-Trump party, um, as they as they come back into power potentially. Uh, Donnie, which they're on track to do. Yeah, I take your point about your focus groups and difference to democracy, but you're the ad genius. How do you make them care about what Steve's describing? I talk to them about the economy in their pocketbook. I mean, it's so it, shallow. I'm, I want to win. OK, I, 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 I wish I could believe that you, you can pose to the American voters, look, Donald Trump lost by 60, 70,000 votes last time. We saw, we saw the show. We saw a four-year show. There's, there's, there's no... So is the answer, we're going to scare people with more of that? Or is the answer is, we're going to scare you... But let me press back. The economy is significantly better than it was, and President but Biden's that, but, poll numbers aren't much higher than... But than because he hasn't gotten the message out. What I'm just saying is, just the, the old dragnet, Jack Webb, just the facts, man. Get out there. Wages, unemployment jobs, IRAs, stock market, get it out. It's never been better. They just haven't found a way to pound the facts. You've talked a lot about it on the show. The only way you beat a culture war is strong economic numbers. Other ways you lose it. Democrats lose. They don't know how to, look, Steve knows it's better than anybody else. They don't know how to play dirty. They don't know how to fight dirty. They don't know how to, they don't know how to culture skirmish. And so the answer is, and by the way, we unfortunately might not have this, but if the answer is right now, you bang people, you are better off today than you were with the bad guys. This is the party of yes. The other party is the party of no. This is the party of can do. This is the party of more jobs. The other party, they want to hurt you, we want to help you. Hit them, it's the economy, stupid. That's it, that's all you got. You're going to lose the other fights because the bad guys know how to play better. Use the facts. And so I wish the argument was a greater moral discussion I just think we've drifted as a country, and, and, and I, I don't mean to be this cynical. That's the way I feel.